What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys my review of the Android Oreo update for the Galaxy Note 8. Now I'm talking about the official version. I've done a couple of videos on the beta version and how to install those. This is the version that rolled out to the AT&T Note 8 and will also start rolling out via an OTA to the T-Mobile Note 8 later tonight on Sunday, April 1st. I did flash this using a nice guide from my friend Max Weinbach over at XDA. I'll drop the link below if you guys want to try to get it early if you don't get the OTA from T-Mobile tonight. That's the baseband version right there. It ends on CRC2, Android 8.0.0 with Samsung Experience version 9.0. And you can also see it does have the March 1st security patch on it. There is a way to get the April 1st security patch already as well. Max Weinbach has a nice guide on that too. I'll link it below if you're interested. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into a quick overview of the smoothness and battery life quickly. And then I'll talk about some of the new features. A lot of them are the same as they were in the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus, which I already did videos on. The smoothness has improved quite a bit on the Galaxy Note 8 coming from Nougat to Android Oreo. One place where you'll notice it the most is when you swipe between the Bixby screen and your home screen. It seems to be much more lag free. There usually uses a huge delay on Nougat when swiping back and forth here. Otherwise, the UI is still very smooth. I didn't really have too much lag on Nougat except when navigating over to that Bixby screen. That seems to have been fixed. Everything else humming along very nicely. Now, battery life has been good for me. I did go ahead and do a full factory reset and then restore my phone. Um, I would recommend doing that whenever you manually flash something like I did. If you have the OTA and it gives you any problems, you can also go ahead and do a factory reset if you want. That seems to have done the trick and given me good battery life. I'm getting about five to five and a half hours screen on time with my moderate to heavy use, which I would say is pretty good uh, and on par with what I get from other flagships and what I've been getting from the Galaxy S9 Plus, uh, which of course is very similar in form factor and size to the Galaxy Note 8. So with those things out of the way, let me touch on some of the new features that you're going to get with the Galaxy Note 8 Oreo update that you might enjoy. The first one is autofill. So if you go into an app, you can use the new autofill framework in Android Oreo to take advantage of that. You can use uh, Google, LastPass, or Samsung Pass when you tap here. It'll give you the option to autofill now with your favorite service. I'm using Samsung Pass. You go ahead and just use your fingerprint, and I'll go ahead and autofill, and you can sign into the app. In this case, Spotify. That's a really cool feature. You can actually control that feature by going into the settings. It's really easy if you just go up here and search for autofill service because it's a little bit to go through. Autofill service right here will take you to the preferred service. You can also add a service from the Play Store. So that's really nice. Uh, another thing that you're going to notice in the visual changes um, are the media controls. So if you play something now, for instance, on Spotify, you're going to get your media controls in the notification shade. They're nice and colored, along with the album art, and it looks really nice in my opinion. The only thing that kind of breaks it up is if you have a dark one like this, the white background that you see here for the notifications and the notification shade makes that look a little bit less streamlined, but it's kind of a nice touch. You'll also notice that it looks very similar to what you saw on the Pixel when Android Oreo came out. Uh, what else? We've got edge lighting, and actually a really cool feature that I didn't talk about when I did the beta review is that now you can actually have your edge lighting match the app color. So if you go into display in settings and scroll down until you see the edge screen right there, if you tap on edge lighting, I have it set to always turn on the edge lighting whenever I get a notification. Under edge lighting style, there's now a whole bunch of different effects to choose from than there were before. You've got glitter, multicolor, glow. But if you choose the basic effect and you go into color, you can now have the color of the lighting around the edges light up to match your apps. So you can see here that I've got Facebook, Flamingo, Hangouts, Instagram, Facebook Messenger Light, and Samsung Stock Messages app. You can actually add any apps that you want to get notifications from, and then you can choose the color with a custom color picker. I really like that. Of course, if you have a bunch of apps that are all blue, it's gonna be hard to distinguish between those various shades of blue, so I use purple for Facebook and blue for Messenger Light. That's a really nice feature. Like I said, if you want to add the apps, you can go to manage notifications, turn on whichever apps you want to get the edge lighting notifications from, and then go in there and set the custom color. So the extra edge lighting effects, and then also having the app match the color is really nice. Uh, the clock on your lock screen, there's now new styles to choose from there, and you can also have the color match the color of your wallpaper, which is really cool. If you go into lock screen and security in settings, and scroll down to clock and face widgets, go to clock style, 
you'll notice that there's a bunch of different new lock screen clocks and always on display clocks. You can choose both of those within here. But the really cool feature that I think in addition to that is that when you go to color now, this first option here, which is enabled by default, actually matches the color of your wallpaper to the clock. So you can see here, this one's a little bit hard to see the type, so let's switch it back to the standard one. You can see the pink right there, it's matching my wallpaper color. So if I go to the lock screen, you guys can actually see what that looks like. You can see the nice white and then light pink from my clock color, which is matching my wallpaper. That's a really nice touch. They add you a lot of customizations, but also gives you some nice matching on your lock screen. The next thing is custom folder colors. So another thing that you can use to help theme your device. You can see right here, I've got custom colors for my social and Google folders. If you go into the folder itself at the top here, you have the color icon. You can see right here, there's the color wheel and you can go in here and change it to anything that you want. You can also see your recently used colors there at the bottom. One thing I like is that you can choose black for the background color on your color picker. That looks really nice, especially if you're going for a dark theme. And then the apps show up really well and really distinct on the background there. It's just an extra thing to add to your theming capabilities. Icon badges, which of course go along with notification dots in Android Oreo. If you long press on the home screen, go to home screen settings, app icon badges. You can choose to have these shown with the number, which Samsung has done for a while or shown without the number, which is like the current icon uh, notification dots that you would have in Android Oreo on the Pixel. The big downside to the notification dots on the Galaxy Note 8 and the Galaxy S8 is that they don't change color with the app. So if you look at all the different apps, like the Play Store's got an orange notification dot, Spotify's got an orange notification dot, my Google app's got an orange notification dot, it doesn't match the color of the application, which seems like a real downside because Samsung's got all this other cool color matching going on, but they're not doing it with notification dots like you see on the Pixel. The next thing are notification channels. This is something that's a, a little more hidden, a little less user facing, but something that you'll enjoy. When you go to your notifications now, if you slide over, swipe to the right, you see the settings right there, you can go into settings, and then there's a whole bunch of different categories for which you can control notifications within those individual categories. Some of the best apps to actually do this with are things like Gmail. So let me actually show you what Gmail looks like because it's one that has a whole bunch of notification channel categories that you can use and manage. You can see if you go into notifications for Gmail, there's all these various categories that you can actually change which ones you want to receive notification from and then take granular control of how those are actually displayed. So for things like uh, email apps, social media apps, you can pick the precise applications you want to get and you don't have to get all the other ones. This is nice for your day-to-day -day management, especially if you run a business social media channel like I do. The next thing are screenshot labels. And this is one that I haven't seen too many people talk about. And uh, it's kind of an interesting one, kind of a big one. And that is when you take a screenshot now and you actually go into the screenshot, I did that earlier. If you go in, if you go into your file manager and you go to details for the photo, you can see that it appends the name of the app to the end of the file name. This might not seem like a very big deal, but for someone who uses screenshots a lot when I'm writing articles and I need to know which app I took a screenshot in, this is really nice for organization purposes and it's just one extra bit of customization and control that Samsung is giving you with Android Oreo. And then the final one is probably one of the bigger ones that a lot of people are going to enjoy and that is picture in picture mode. If you go into YouTube and you start watching any video, you can go ahead and just get out of the app. So hit the home screen and then it's going to give you the little picture in picture window at the bottom which you can drag around and then of course you can tap it to go back in full screen. The only problem is that you can use this in certain apps like YouTube and Google Maps right now but actually one of the apps that you might want to use it on the most, which is Netflix, currently requires Android 8.1, so you won't be able to use that on the Galaxy Note 8 with picture-in-picture -picture because the Galaxy Note 8 does come with Android Oreo 8.0. So anyway, those are some of my favorite user-facing features that you guys are likely to notice um, using the Oreo update on your Note 8 day-to-day. -day. Unfortunately, there are no new S Pen features. That's probably one of the biggest letdowns from the Oreo update. All of the S Pen stuff is the same stuff that was really here in the Nougat, the same stuff that was here from the launch. Also, you don't get any of the new camera features um, that you saw on the Galaxy S9 Plus, like the Super Slow Mo. You don't get AR emoji, and you also don't get the intelligent scan feature that uses iris scanning and face unlock simultaneously, or sort of in tandem. You still have to choose between face unlock and iris scanning on the Galaxy Note 8 in Android Oreo. 
Anyways, guys, that has been my full overview and review of the official Android 8.0 Ori update for the Galaxy Note 8. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification icon so I can make future videos like this. Find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. Also, find me writing at gadgethacks.com where I write about Android. Appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.